Okay, in this video we are going to explore the curtain wall. So I'm in a project file and I'm going to start out by making a floor. And I'll make the floor 30 feet by 30 feet. Okay, and we're going to take this floor and we're going to copy it to level 2. So from the ribbon under the clipboard, I'll choose copy to clipboard. I'll click on the down arrow for paste and choose align to selected levels. I'll select level 2 and click OK. So if we go to 3D, you see that we have both slabs. And I'm just going to change the distance between the slabs by going to my east elevation and setting level 2 to 13 feet. And since that slab by default is 1 foot thick, that will leave 12 feet between the top of level 1 and the bottom of that slab. So a curtain wall is a wall type in Revit. So from the Home tab, if you click on Wall, and from the Properties panel, you click on the down arrow, you can scroll down to the curtain wall family and you'll see by default in Revit there are three family types. Let's start with the curtain wall and this will draw a blank sheet of glass so to speak and if I select that curtain wall and I type in HI it will isolate it. Now the way the curtain wall works in Revit is everything is hosted to grid lines so on the left and right edge as well as the bottom and the top of this curtain wall there is a grid line. I can't access those default grid lines but we'll see them in a second. Let's host a mullion to each one of the boundary grid lines by going to the ribbon clicking on mullion. Now as I hover my mouse over each edge I'll see the grid line and as I click on them, Revit hosts a mullion to the grid line. I'll hit escape. So what this means to add mullions, I need to first add a grid. So from the ribbon, if I click on curtain grid, and I move my mouse along the edge of the curtain wall, you'll see on the vertical edge it'll place a horizontal grid line and if I put my cursor over the horizontal edge it'll create a vertical grid line so I'll go ahead and create a vertical grid line and I can move the placement of that grid line at any time so now let's host another mullion to the new grid line by going up to the ribbon clicking on mullion and selecting that grid line I'll type in HR to reset my temporary hide. And now what I can do is I can constrain my curtain wall to the bottom of the slab. So I'll select my curtain wall from the properties panel. For top constraint, I'll change it from unconnected up to level 2 and I'll click apply. And you'll see it's going to the top of level 2. By default, that slab is one foot thick, so I can change my top offset to negative one foot and click apply. And now it's going to the bottom of that slab. Let's orbit around to the west side and let's create a curtain wall on the west side. So from the ribbon, I'll click on wall. Revit remembers the last wall type that I drew was curtain wall 1 and I can draw my curtain wall and I'll go ahead and set my top constraint up to level 2 and I'll give it a top offset of negative 1 foot okay I'm going to go ahead and isolate this wall by typing in HI. And this time, instead of placing 
grid lines and hosting mullions to the grid line, which essentially creates a custom curtain wall. I'm going to go ahead and create this curtain wall by type. So I'm going to click on edit type and I'm going to go ahead and click on duplicate and I'm going to call this curtain wall type 6 foot by 2 foot. Click OK and you see I have a vertical grid pattern and by default the layout is set to none. Well I can click in this box click on the down arrow and change it to fixed distance and I'll set my distance between the mullions to be six feet I'll do the same for the horizontal fixed distance and two feet so if I hit OK that's going to create grid lines with no mullions now I'm not going to randomly host mullions to the grid lines again I'm going to do it through the type so I'm going to select the curtain wall, click on edit type, and if I scroll down, I see vertical mullions and horizontal mullions. So I can change all these nuns, I can change them all to two and a half by five. click OK and that will place my mullions. Now if I type HR and I select the two curtain walls that I've drawn using my control key and type in HI to isolate them if I deselect them and zoom into this corner mullion what I'll see is I have overlapping mullions at the corner one from the south curtain wall and one from the, the west curtain wall so I'm going to select the mullion from the south curtain wall and I can do that by placing my cursor over the mullion and using my tab to cycle through the selection select that mullion and I can change it from the properties panel and I'm going to use a 5 inch V corner and Revit will give me an error that says corner mullion overlaps mullion placed on neighboring curtain wall which we've already looked at in detail that there was an overlap and Revit's going to go ahead and delete all those overlaps for me if I click on delete elements and that fixes the overlapping corner mullion condition okay so now let's go ahead and place a door in a curtain wall so if I want my door to be six foot wide and that is the specified distance between these two mullions and I want it to be eight feet high I have to make a panel that's six by eight so my panels are now six by two so I'm gonna have to create one panel in this area when I select the mullion it's pinned and it won't let me delete it so I'm gonna have to unpin them so I'm gonna go ahead and select the ones that I want to delete using my control key and I'm going to go ahead and unpin by clicking on these pins and Revit will keep them selected which will allow me to just hit the delete key and then you see that there are four glazed panels and I need to turn it into one panel so I need to access the grid line and if I select the grid line from the ribbon I'm going to click on add remove segments and I'm going to select that part of the grid line I want to remove it's confusing at first because it looks like it didn't do anything but if I hit escape once then I can see it got rid of the grid line at that segment so I'm going to continue doing that for the remaining ones okay so now I have if I tab through now I have this one panel that I can apply a curtain wall door to so those curtain wall doors are not loaded by default 
into a project file. So I need to go to insert, load family, and browse inside the doors folder. And you'll see there are some family types that come with Revit, curtain wall double glass, curtain wall single glass, curtain wall storefront. So I'm going to choose curtain wall double glass. Click open and it loads it into the project file. Nothing happens but I need to select that panel again and from the properties panel in the upper left scroll down and I'll find curtain wall double glass and the door fits to that glass panel. If I type the shortcut SD so by default the panels are glazed well I can change some of these panels to solid so I'm gonna go ahead and select some random panels and I'm tabbing through and when I have the one I want to select highlighted I hold down my control key and when I have the panel selected I can go to the properties panel and change them from a glazed to a solid and we'll do a few more okay so the last thing that I wanna show us is how to edit a curtain walls profile so if I type in HR and I orbit around to the other side and we go ahead and we draw a curtain wall from the home tab wall select it set its top constraint up to level 2 with a negative 1 foot offset click apply so the nice thing about setting up types of curtain walls versus the custom is I have them stored in this project file and I can just select from them. So here's my curtain wall six foot by two foot family type. I can click on it. And it automatically changes that to a six by two foot mullion spacing. So let's isolate that curtain wall by typing in HI and what I have in the ribbon is I have an edit profile so I can click on edit profile and the boundary lines now are shown in purple to edit this profile I really want to do this from a true elevation view not a 3d elevation so I'm gonna go to my north elevation and I'm gonna select any one of these purple boundary lines and we're going to see by default some constraints were created when we made this curtain wall. So I'm going to unlock the vertical constraint. And this is going to allow me to drag the end of this curtain wall over. And what I have to make sure of is that these purple lines are in a closed loop. And right now there's another boundary line that needs to be dragged back making sure my snap markers show up so that it's a closed loop and if I click on the green check mark it's going to change the profile of that curtain wall and we can see that in 3D so that's it for the Revit curtain wall